So Perry is a junior at Paul Schreiber and he's enjoyed gardening. Um, so he's gonna read this beautiful blog post that he wrote uh, on observing his own backyard this spring for our mindful uh, May solicitation for blog articles. So take it away, Perry. I'm a junior at Paul D. Schreiber High School in Fort Washington. I've always enjoyed gardening. And every Mother's Day, my family would plant annuals and give the deck boxes new soil. I appreciated the aesthetics the annuals added, but I would shift my focus to, veg to the vegetable garden soon after planting, being that it gave me a real reward in the form of food. Two years later, I learned about the importance of native plants and how our local or I'm sorry, two years ago, I learned the importance of native plants and how our local pollinators needed them to feed themselves and support our ecosystems. I was intrigued by the idea of practical flowers. I was inspired to create a native plant garden after participating in a very wild Long Island summer program. When I first heard about the program in a local newsletter, I was really attracted to extending my passion to a community level. I applied and became an intern. The following summer, I was a mentor. Um, and it's been really rewarding to work with other like-minded people. My backyard recently needed repair and the machinery brought in, and the machinery that was brought in created damage. I took the opportunity to draw designs for the yard and add new garden beds, replacing some of the lawn. I took into account the sun, water, and soil conditions to select what plants to put in the backyard. The space has partial sun and is slightly moisture retaining making it accommodating for plants that thrive in different conditions as long as they don't need dry full sun. I researched which native plants would grow there and last summer I started my garden. I've been adding plants and I've seen amazing growth. It's incredible to see the changes and learn what works and what does not. This summer will be my second summer as a mentor at Rewild and I'm looking forward to contributing more, helping to guide the new interns and learning more about ways to foster my native garden. This May, I first saw the native perennials I planted the previous fall. The spring blooming creeping phlox and bearberry were the first to bring color to the garden with their white and pink flowers. The summer blooming hydrangeas and phlox paniculatas have followed by growing over a foot since late April. With all the growth of the foliage came insects. I've seen two tiger swallowtail butterflies flying around, which I hope will return for later blooms. Unfortunately, two of the cardinal flowers, which have been thriving, became infested with aphids, and I decided to dig them up and put them in isolation. I've also seen bumblebees buzzing through the yard occasionally. I noticed that the bumblebees were not only visiting our native plants, but also the grove of invasive barberry, which sits on the hill a few meters away from the wildflowers. It occurred to me that the bumblebees, while pollinators, are not all native. Unlike the barberries, a different invasive shrub, which does not seem to pro provide any positives, has been encroaching upon the yard. Along the back fence, a number of Japanese viburnum have shot up multiple feet over the past two years. Not only are they leaning into the garden, shading native plants, but they've been flowering profusely. I've seen no insects, birds, or squirrels come to eat their berries. I plan to get a pair of loppers and tell them this season which I have done. Other weeds have quickly sprouted too. It can be regret not mulching in the fall. One of the weeds is actually the native jewel weed. It first showed up a year or two ago as just a couple of plants producing canopies of striking orange flowers. So I left them. This spring, I noticed there are no longer just a few. They have now formed a dense carpet where they first appeared and are also spreading in the forest behind the yard. While they introduce themselves to the yard rather aggressively, I'm gonna let them grow in a cohesive clump and provide for the insects. I figured if it's native to Long Island and popped up itself, is there anything more appropriate than the volunteer jewel weed in the garden? Since weeds seem to thrive in the yard, I saw that as a sign that the soil was rich with nutrients and decomposers. But as I filled the new native garden bed, I noticed it was actually fairly sandy and rocky. Not only did it not feel pleasant, but I encountered few to no worms, insects, or even rotting objects. Nonetheless, when I put in the new plants, I fill the holes with compost and mix them to the soil, and so far they're growing amazingly. Overall activity in the garden is booming, 
And even though that everything is perfect, I know it can improve the practical, environmental, and visual attractiveness to the yard.